Okay, hey, we're checking out another ColecoVision game. We are talking about Anti-Environmental Encounter, otherwise known as AE, or the ColecoVision. <laughs> Your vision is our vision. ColecoVision. All right, let's see about this AE game here. I'm gonna, Before we really jump into that, let me read through this for you. Um, AE was, it looks like it was recently released in 1982, and although that box cover looked like it was released as a ColecoVision game, um, it's, oh, it's 1982, and it says it's a trademark of Broadabund Software, which, did that become Broaderbund? Because I thought that was the name. Um, anyone can correct me. I'm not a genius on this, uh, the story behind all of these. Um, program by Programmers 3 Incorporated. Ah, collector Vision. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's a Collector. I bet I misread that cover. I bet it's Collector Vision released. So perhaps it was created years ago and that, that, because I did not remember this one. And um, started thinking I would check out a bunch of different games. And this one just kind of came up. I was looking through and I was like, what is that? Let me check it out. So the controls confused me at first, and we'll get into that. Um, <clears throat> AE is an anti-environmental encounter and agility exercise and automa automaton elimination. The AE was designed as pollution-fighting robots intended to save the world. However, the AE prototypes have a bug which makes them the polluters. The AE somehow slipped through the quality control out into the unsuspecting universe out of control, they have quickly become a menace and are in danger of contaminating large areas of the cosmos. The AE must be stopped. You must use your anti-AE blaster missiles to drive these pestering, polluting, wow, puh -puh, pestering, polluting squadrons deep into space where they can do no harm. Annihilate each AE in a wave to make a perfect attack. Um, and then it goes on to how you can get better here and stuff. Now, I did, I've did. i never really paid attention to the scoring. I've just played it. And looking here, um, oh, there's a pause feature. Ooh. Um, that, that obviously is a newer game feature, right? We never used to have that. Um, so the one thing I noticed, so the, the scoring is interesting. There is uh, just eliminating one of the AE is 100 points. A perfect attack, I guess that's if you've, killed all of the section is 400 and then you're on different planetary surfaces or whatever and for each one if you get three perfect attacks in there you get 2000 points so that's a major boost um so let me show you the main thing that <coughs> makes these controls a little more difficult um so let's switch over here see my guys going by here i'll pull this up do 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 Anti-environmental encounter. See here it says broader buns. I'm I'm wondering if that was a typo in the uh, thing. And it says 1984 Coleco. I'm so confused because that doesn't seem to make sense. All right, because um, I'm pretty sure Collector Vision didn't release it then. Um, okay, we're gonna start easy so I can explain these controls, and then hopefully we'll we'll work our way up. So I think the graphics are pretty fantastic. Now the thing that made this confusing to start, you your your shots do not explode until you release the button. So you hold it down and then you release. Now the thing I have still yet to master is I can't seem to get myself to move, um, to fire, move, and then release, which I think would make you kind of a master at this game. I can control the shot just fine. Um, and the release, it's its just an odd, it's, I, I compared to juggle back in college and theater, I, worked on or you know learned that was before that actually in high school at some point i learned to juggle but it was this thing where you had to force yourself to not do the natural thing which was simply to release the uh to throw two balls in the area to do one and then the other and it was sort of forcing yourself to 
you know, do something a little differently. I haven't gotten that with this. Uh, I mean, I have with the shots, but I should be able to do it, move over, and then release at the right time. But I guess it's still, my brain still sees that as two things. And it says, uh, no, you can do one or the other. So this is level one. At first, this was much more challenging. And the patterns they fly are great. So here, I'll, I'll get shot because watch. Then you see the pattern that they were flying. And the, the, it flows very smoothly. The animation is really well done. Um, they got the perfect balance of making these um, the size of the AEs. And see, you can tell that they, in this slower level, you know, in this level one, the, the um, different variants are not super smooth between, you know, where they fly, uh, their, their flight pattern, or what should I say, their next animation. They're not that similar. I mean, sometimes I think it helps that it looks like there's a flap in there. And they, I wonder if they work with an animator to just simp to make that that perfect or if the programmer just had that skill because they look gorgeous i'm gonna get hit again run into me oh my gosh shoot me there we go i think that's a it's a really gorgeous and they very maybe it's almost like they track butterflies um they seem to fly indiscriminately where they're headed I'd be interested to know how they program this because I, I, it feels as if it's something where they, you know, they mapped out a pattern very specifically, like an animator would. I'm going to try so hard to shoot, move, and then release. See, I think I just let go when it felt right, not, or you know, when my brain remembered. So if you shoot like you usually do in a game, you'd be shooting like this. So you have to hold on to that shot until it's necessary. And then you release it. And it, it can ex and it can blow up several of the uh, AE in succession because they run into that explosion. So if you leave them just the littlest bit, you'll actually get more out of your shot. can't seem to move because basically the shots are timed to make you get out of the way see I need to get out of the way but then I either release the shot or move out of the way but I, I can't or time the release Okay, I've got to show you a more difficult level because this is ridiculous. All right, let me die a couple times. Um, I think the backgrounds are really neat. Uh, there's a great variety. Like this one has a, a broad selection of colors. So not just the flight patterns, but the backgrounds are interesting and varied enough to make it really fun. Let me try. All right, let's try. I think even level three completely destroys me. Let's just give it a try and embarrass myself. Holy cow, that was way better than I thought I was going to do. <laughs> that was not better than I thought I was going to do. <laughs> and I believe level four is just about at that super fast pace. Okay, I got to get out of the way down. So so actually, you do realize, or you do, at, over time you go, okay, that's a pattern. And you start to learn, there's only so many patterns. So you can start to get better at them. However... As the game increases in intensity um, and speed, let's start over again here. It get you know when you start to miss one here or there, the the more extended pattern, the longer it goes, the less you remember that because you didn't get that far. Like and you saw in level one there, we we'll try four. You saw in level. I mean, it's just crazy. It's just like, what can I get? Try not to die. <laughs> but they have to be destroyed. It said so in the manual, so I don't know how I can... Oh, that's cool. If you get the right spot, 
they're going so fast they run into your shot. All right, all right, let me try this. So if you, I might have to try this for a while and give, make another video. <laughs> Obviously, that was not good. My last game that I quit on level one was 34,800. And this one, I didn't make it to 3,000. So it says something. But my point is, if you, if I were to, let's, let me just show you the last speed, then I'll, then I'll wrap this one up. If, so I'm shooting away and I'm doing a good job. Oh, apparently I'm not doing a good job. So the thing is, so I've gotten to where I can get them pretty quick, right? Well, then if some get past, I don't know farther into the pattern to necessarily both avoid them when they dive bomb or whatever and where they're going to go next. Like right now, I know how they start. But once the game gets faster and they get farther along, you don't necessarily know exactly where they're going to go. Like that was a double loop. I didn't know it was going to be a double loop. I've gotten to where I killed them so quickly. So even though the patterns do repeat. This is a thing that I do best, yeah. So this is a level two. This is a pretty good. I think this would get challenging pretty quickly. I'm still trying to get them before they all leave. Ah, I wanted to get them all. I wanted to get them all. So let's see. We have this background with the two moons. Now we have one with a whole bunch of moons and sort of a checkerboard landscape in very bright colors. This is like a bad PowerPoint colors. You know, you go to one of those meetings, somebody goes, I just discovered how to change the background. Um, I can get through this. Oh my gosh, I have to get to where I can move and release. Because if I can do that, I can avoid the shots and get the cut. And I really haven't been able to do it. Anymore. I'm just going to practice. <laughs> I do love those patterns. So anyway, there's a number of backgrounds. It's really fun. Uh, fun and like nothing else out there. You know, it's got that um, Galaga Galaxian feel where you have to learn how to time yourself to avoid um, dying, but it's also got the uh, the variance in the game of the of the releasing the shot. That's just so unique. So, hope you enjoyed. That is anti environmental, uh, not adventure, encounter. I believe. Check it out.